right? So this is a simple gearbox, and we have connected the shaft of the motor to the gearbox. That is the very first thing uh, we are going to do. Now the casing or the fixed part of the motor has to be connected to a rotational reference frame. So let me search for uh, rotational reference frame. So there is a mechanical rotational reference, and that will be connected to the C. So this is what uh, the rotational reference will look like, and it is nothing but uh, it says that this part remains steady, and the R is going to rotate with reference to this uh, portion. Once this is done, uh, what is required is how we are going to control the DC motor. So the DC motor can be controlled by a DC-DC converter. Let's say we, we take this DC-DC uh, converter. And this DC-DC converter is going to have one input terminal from the battery and output terminals to the battery, which are at different DC level. Right. What will happen if we directly connect battery to the DC motor? We will lose any control over the vehicle. So we'll not have any acceleration or braking effect. If you simply connect directly the terminals, the vehicle is going to run at the full speed, right? Whatever is the amount of energy available and whatever is the battery and the motor power, the vehicle will run according to this. So this DC-DC converter will require a typical uh, control. So instead of uh, this DC-DC converter, we can actually have one H bridge which is uh, a combination of four number of switches and it will look like this. So the H bridge is nothing but a four number of power devices, which is, let's say like this, right? So if I change the model to the external, I'm going to get this kind of an arrangement, right? So here you see four number of switches. So this is, let's say, positive terminal of the battery. This is, let's say, the negative terminal of the battery. And here is what we'll connect the motor to, right? So these two terminals are where we'll connect our motor. So I'm going to place it over here. And I'm going to connect the positive terminal with the positive of the motor, uh, negative to the negative of the motor. So here, now we have a PWM controlled DC motor drive. So uh, look at those inputs where uh, these, are, uh, these are the inputs, the PWM, the reference, reverse, and the brake. So these four are the control inputs. And these two are the power outputs. And these two are power inputs, right? So we'll connect a battery over here. And we'll, we have connected the DC motor terminals over here. Now, in case of an actual vehicle, you will find uh, different types of the motor, which may be a brushless DC motor, or which are like permanent magnet synchronous motor, or some automakers are trying induction motors as well. But if it is your uh, very first simulation with electric vehicle, I will prefer that you use a very simple permanent magnet DC motor. So in this DC motor, you can actually choose the parameters by the rated power, rated speed, and the no load speed. So usually, the power rating of uh, the DC motor used for an electric car is of the order of a few 15 to let's say 100 kilowatts, right? So you have to enter here uh, the num number of kilowatts, right? Let's say we keep as uh, 50 or 60 kilowatts. And uh, according to the vehicle speed and the gear ratio here, you have to choose the rated speed of the motor. So let's say your rated speed of the motor is uh, 5000 at uh, rated low, low torque applied. And the no load speed is let's say uh, 8000. Uh, RPM, right? And the armature inductance and the rated DC supply is, let's say, uh, 300 volt. So usually, uh, these motors are of uh, high power and they are of high voltage, obviously. So uh, 
you can have 100 number of cells connected in series each of 3 volt or 3.6 volt per cell and you will end up having around 300 to 400 dc bus voltage so with this uh, this is about the model of this uh, dc motor 